Hello and welcome to the Patent Behavior Initiatives Mental Wellness and Behavior Support Series during COVID-19 outbreak. My name is Silky Caparelli and it is my pleasure to speak to you from the Patent Pittsburgh office and in connection with the Patent Behavior Initiative. The mission of the Pennsylvania Training and Technical Assistance Network is to support the efforts and initiatives of the Bureau of Special Education and to build the capacity of local educational agencies to serve students who receive special education services. Our goal for each child is to ensure individualized education program teams begin with the general education setting with the use of supplementary aids and services before considering a more restrictive environment. This session was created to support parents, guardians, older siblings, grandparents, and others who are home with students schooling from home. For decades, many families across the world engage in cyber schooling and homeschooling every day. As education systems across the country pivot to temporary online instruction and learning environments, students in grades kindergarten all the way up to our youth who are graduating are now working to finish the 2019-2020 school year from their home-based settings. We hope that you'll find this session helpful. This session aims to meet two objectives. The first one is to explain how to recognize executive skills. And the second one is to demonstrate how we can encourage executive skills necessary for students to engage and fulfill learning demands in the schooling environment set up at home. Before we begin this session, we would like to issue a note of caution. Let's take a moment to consider children and youth throughout this health crisis. This was issued from SAMHSA, which stands for Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration. This comes from the document Tips for Caregivers, Parents, and Teachers During Infectious Disease Outbreaks. Be careful not to pressure children to talk about an outbreak or join in expressive activities. While most children will easily talk about the outbreak, some may become frightened. Some may even feel more anxiety and stress if they talk about it, listen to others talk about it, or look at artwork related to the outbreak. Allow children to remove themselves from these activities and monitor them for signs of distress. What is COVID-19? According to the World Health Organization, coronaviruses are a large family of viruses that cause illness ranging from the common cold to more severe diseases. Coronavirus disease, now known as COVID-19, is a new strain that was discovered in 2019, which has not been previously identified in humans. Common signs of infection include respiratory symptoms, fever, cough, shortness of breath, and breathing difficulties. The Department of Health has currently issued the following recommendations. As far as knowing the symptoms, it's indicated fever, cough, and shortness of breath are the primary symptoms associated with COVID-19 and is often spread by close contact. The Department of Health also advises all to take precautions like washing your hands frequently, not touching your face, and avoiding people who appear sick. To support your understanding of the order of information to come, we will first be sure to define executive skills for you. Then we will move through these very executive skills and help you understand what you can do to encourage these skills in your children and youth who are schooling from home. So what is your role here? Well, most people have heard of executive secretaries or executive administrative supports. These people help keep their assigned person organized and on track by keeping their calendar, sending them reminders, organizing their space and materials, and even helping them plan how to get started on a project. Humans are not born with these executive skills. Rather, they develop as we grow. And for some, these skills may never be fully in place. These are our friends who live with attention deficit disorder. This doesn't impair their intellect in any way. They just need lots of help with things like organizing, getting started, and finishing. As a family member who is helping your child school from home, your time to coach these skills will build your child's confidence as they figure out how to engage school learning from home. Remember, as you model and remodel to be patient, it's okay to do for and do with and offer plenty of praise and encouragement. As your child practices their new ways to engage their learning, 
the predictable repetition will build their confidence and bring success. Let's take a formal look at the definition of executive skills. As defined by the National Center for Learning Disabilities, executive function is a term used to describe a set of mental processes that helps us connect past experience with present action. We use executive function when we perform such activities as planning, organizing, strategizing, and paying attention to and remembering details. For children and youth who are moving to a schooling from home setting, these are the very skills that they may need coaching and plenty of practice. Especially as kids situate their space and materials and figure out the technology demands for their online assignments and classes. So let's break this down a little bit more. Both the medical field and the educational field have an abundance of research around how children, youth, and adults manage themselves. There are many models that have been offered over the years. For our learning today, this model comes to us from the work of both Dawson and Guare, as well as the work from Joa, Joa Isquith, Guy, and Kenworthy. These psychologists developed their understanding of executive functions through sound research, and they created a rating skill that helps parents, teachers, and professionals understand children and think more specifically about how to be helpful. The two categories are behavior regulation and metacognition. You can see the three skills that help us regulate our behaviors, response inhibition, emotional control, and flexibility. The other category is metacognition. Metacognition is our ability to stand back and take a bird's eye view of ourselves in a situation. It's our ability to self-monitor and think about our thinking. The six skills in this category are organization, working memory, planning, task initiation, sustained attention, and time management. So for right now, let's focus on these seven skills highlighted as they most relate to supporting your child at home. Recognizing these skills and knowing how to coach them will help your child be a better student as they work from home. While we won't do a deep dive into each one of these, we will explain what it is and how to coach the skill. Let's start with flexibility. Flexible thinking is the ability to easily shift when the world around us changes. An example of flexible thinking for a second grader is when a teacher changes directions for an assignment and the student easily shifts to adjust. An example of flexible thinking for a teenager is when their first choice of something's not available so they can easily settle for their second choice. If you notice your child is frustrated, it could mean that their flexible thinking needs support. Here's what you can do. Provide a visual schedule for their day and as things shift, model for them how to move those items around. When unexpected changes occur, big or small, allow time for your student to take it all in. This may mean they rant a bit, talk about it, or may even be silent about it. Then support their adjusting and moving forward. Finally, another helpful tip is to model positive self-talk. Talking oneself through unexpected changes helps to get through and move forward. Avoid unnecessary blame or complaining. Rather, model how to shift their energies given the change in plans. Help them be flexible. This is a lifelong skill for sure. Let's talk about organization. When children or youth or even adults are depressed or angry, organizing things can be very hard. Don't let them drown in their worry. Take one, two, or maybe even three hours as they first begin to explore how to school from home. Some kids just do this naturally, organizing. However, other kids need more support to build their confidence and understanding of how and why to organize. Avoid thinking that your child should already know how to do this. If you see signs of disorganization, it's okay to model for your child, do it with them, remodel, and then watch as they grow in their independence. Even for teenagers, it's okay to get them started by doing this for them, then with them. Then over time, you may have to remodel and remind occasionally as they build these healthy habits and build their confidence. Let's think about organization in two categories. The first is materials. This will surely vary for each student, but here are a few tips. 
create a visual schedule that will help them through their learning day. Don't hesitate to hear here to communicate with your child's teacher to ask for supporting organizers. Another thing you can do is to guide your child towards setting up piles by subject. Create a checklist for the week and even for each day. Create headers on a grid and help them fill in the teacher name and contact, subject, and if applicable, the virtual space that goes with that class. Create an at-a-glance document that your child can record usernames and passwords as they may be managing an ever-growing list of online learning spaces. Many times, adults just need to create the form with headers and the student fills in the rest. Again, don't be afraid to model and do this for your child. Some children will require more coaching support than others. Another category of organization to think about is space. Well, of course, this recommendation here uh, regarding technology is to always have students set up in a common area of the home. This way, uh, this helps adults provide their children with active supervision and also helps families to monitor their child's online location. However, the reality of some of our homes is that a quiet space for kids to focus is in their own bedrooms. Consider allowing your child to determine where their best learning spot is in their home and help them set up. Where your child decides to be, help them create a spot for all of their learning things and then label them using tape and marker. Organization is absolutely critical to your child's success. A little modeling and coaching will set your child towards a path of independence. Working memory is how we hold information in memory while we perform more complicated tasks. For our youngest students, it is following more than a two-step task or doing a task that requires us to recall other pieces of information. For our teenagers, working memory helps them remember the different expectations of multiple teachers. Working memory helps them engage physics formulas as they run the formula and recall numbers at the same time. For coaching your kids at home, you can encourage their working memory by reminding them to make lists, to use their textbook, and by encouraging them to reach out to their teacher and ask questions. Many assignments that kids have to finish require them to follow many steps and even use a few different resources. Reminding your stay-at-home student to slow down, make a list, and get to the right resources will support their working memory. Planning how to tackle an assignment is a skill. It requires us to make a roadmap by deciding what to focus on first, what's not important, what materials are needed, and how much time is needed. Many times students just wanna get it all finished and don't even take time to plan. One example is writing. Without taking time to create an outline that plans for the writing, many students simply just throw down whatever comes to mind and the result is a very unorganized piece of writing. For students who are struggling with this executive skill, here is what you can do from home. For our youngest and our oldest students, families can coach this skill by helping them or reminding them to stop and make a plan. Make a checklist for getting through the assignment itself. For example, a student's checklist could include such items as get out pencil and paper, put name on it, put due date on the paper, read the directions, or go to this learning site, download your assignment, finish the assignment, and re-upload your assignment. Email your teacher. Remind students to focus, focus on one thing at a time. Anxieties go up with every assignment that's not turned in. It's, all, it's very important that we understand that as adults. Monitor your child's anxiety and help them understand that they are going to feel some anxiety until they get some of the learning and work completed. This is okay. Be sure to communicate with your child's teacher regarding the rate at which assignments are given. This skill is very important for our students in high school as they can be managing up to seven teachers and seven subjects at a time. Many times when learning is situated in an online instructional space, the assigned work tends to have deadlines like turn in by 11.59 p.m. Model for your child, especially middle school and high school students, how to put things in order of due date and due time. 
Finally, encourage your child or youth to make a list just for their day. Help them set the habit of deciding what is due, in what order they will complete it, and then cross it off the list as they finish each task. Planning and prioritizing is a super important executive skill and one that us as adults at home with our families can model easily and continue to encourage. Keep lists handy, help them cross it off, and remember to praise, praise, praise. Task initiation is an executive skill important to home, school, and work. Kids who have a hard time getting started need support from adults in the form of modeling and encouraging and sometimes even incentivizing. Task initiation is the ability to begin projects in a timely manner. For a fourth grader, this is their ability to start a chore or an assignment right after instructions are given. For a teenager, it's not waiting until the last minute to begin a project. As you can imagine, children who are still growing this skill left to themselves for a period of time may end up in a backlog of missed or late assignments that can negatively impact their grade. Typically, the notion of getting it finished, getting a grade, and even the learning itself is enough to ignite kids to get started. For some, however, this executive skill may need your ongoing coaching from home. So how can you help? First, if you notice this in your child, a great place to start is to find out why they have not started. For some kids, they don't have enough information to start. They may not have the confidence to start, or they may not have the skill to start. It's important to be patient and talk to your child to find out what the barrier is. Then, support your child in communicating to their teacher to get what they need to get started. Support their written email to their teacher. Never ever try not to assume that your child's not starting because they just don't want to or they're being bad. Avoid that thinking, stay positive, and help them communicate with their teacher. Many teachers develop rubrics for assignments. This helps students know where they are going as the rubric defines what the finished assignment should look like. Reach out to your child's teacher to see if they can create one if there isn't one already created. Finally, for some kids, it's A-OK -okay to incentivize. Let's face it, there are some days we just need a carrot at the end of the day to get us through. So offer your child a favorite activity like baking, gaming, arts, playing music, building tents, or sleeping under the dining room table. You know your own child, and I'm certain if you ask what they would like to do, he or she will surely tell you. So don't hesitate to make a deal. It's okay. Now let's talk about sustained attention. This executive skill is our ability to keep paying attention to a task, even when we're distracted, bored, or fatigued. For our youngest kids, this is sticking with the task for five to 15 minutes. For older kids, this is engaging and completing a task for one or two hours with short breaks. For some who struggle with sustained attention, it's typically because they're so easily distracted and move on to something else of more interest, or they're bored, or they may not value it enough, or they may find it fatiguing. So how can you coach this skill from home? Build in breaks in their learning. Some teachers may already have this in their virtual learning schedule. However, for kids who are planning their learning, be sure to have breaks built in for a snack, a moment of exercise, or even a moment of humor and entertainment. Then encourage them to jump right back into their learning. Another tip is to encourage your child's communication with their teacher. More breaks may mean more time to finish. You can also help your child mix it up. If staying on one task is too fatiguing, encourage them to be flexible move to something else, and then come back. Finally, as with task initiation, it's okay to incentivize this executive skill as kids build this muscle. Co-create a reward menu, and as your child demonstrates long periods of focused attention, let them pick from the reward menu. Our final executive skill for now is time management. Note that the order of these skills in this session in no way represents any specific order of importance. Many of these skills overlap one another. For time management, persons of all ages, including adults, need support with forecasting how much time may be needed to complete a task, how much time may have passed, 
and even how much time is left. As you find yourself coaching your child or your youth to support this executive skill, here are a few tips. Create checklists and to-do lists estimating how long tasks will take. Break down assignments into chunk, chunks and assign timeframes for completing each chunk. Use visual calendars to keep track of long-term assignments, due dates, chores, and activities. And be sure to write the due date and due time on top of each assignment. Sometimes we might feel compelled to set a timer for a kid who's really struggling with getting it all in. If your child responds to this in a positive way and gets it done, that's awesome. Add that to your tip list. But for some students, know that setting a timer only breeds unnecessary anxiety. So for some, it's really something to avoid. Like it or not, if you're listening to this session, you are most likely now in a position of coaching your child up around skills necessary to schooling from home. To close out this session, a reminder that the brain continues to mature and develop connections well into adulthood. A child's executive skills are shaped by both physical changes in the brain and by life experiences at home, at school, and the world at large. Early attention to developing efficient skills in this area can be very helpful. And as a rule, patient modeling for them, doing it with them, frequent reassurance, strong communication with teachers, and plenty of positive praise are strongly recommended. We hope that you have found this session to be helpful. These are some of the references we use to develop this session. Thank you for listening to this session. My name is Dr. Silky Caparelli. I'm coming to you from the Pittsburgh Patent Office. For other sessions related to supporting students who are schooling from home, please be sure to visit patent.net. You will find more materials around behavior and instruction for teachers, administrators, families, and other adults who are working to help students in Pennsylvania finish the 2019-2020 school year.